thank you very much. Um, I'm speaking, and I'm microphone. Wow. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan. I'm going to be talking about um, the Internet of Things. Um, yes. I have a slide. This is, a, this is the official company slide. Um, I put this in so that I can come to these events um, without having to take annual leave and those sorts of things. I work in the Christchurch office of Lateral Security. Um, you'll see some of our staff wearing lateral security shirts and other things. Um, we are a information security company. We do these things. There's more information on our website. Also, we are looking for staff. Come have a chat with me. I'll point you in the right direction of the people to speak to. Um, yeah. But who am I really? I am Dan. My handle is Fredin. You can probably, no, you probably can't see that on, on my tag from there. Um, I'm on Twitter. I've got a website which has very little things on it. Um, I w as I said, I work for Lateral Security. I'm also involved in the, uh, the, the local Christchurch IT community in that I am an organizer of Chicon, which happened just recently to, um, as I understand, success. Uh, I also look after the monthly meetups for ISIG in Christchurch, um, and then I have, if in my copious spare time, ha ha, I also have fun with family music and am dabbling a little bit with web development, which is a bit of my history. So today I'm talking about the Internet of Things. So it probably makes sense to start off and figure out what the heck a thing, what, what, it, what is this Internet of Things? So I, I did a bit of research, and it turns out that the Internet of Things are connected things. So we're looking at things being anything that you would probably use in your day-to-day -day life. For example, a fridge, or a toaster, or bathroom scales, or lights in your, in your, in your house, or an alarm system, a camera, a doorbell, a, an, a, a safety alarm, a, a locking system, could be any number of things. Basically, anything with a, s with a sensor, or an actuator, or both, or, or, or multiple of these, that is also connected to the internet. So in order to play with this new fun internet of things, I decided that I needed to get one, or several, and have a play. So my main criteria for finding an internet of things thing that I could play with was that it would be using a technology that I was familiar with. So for example, so in this case, Wi-Fi. The, the other alternatives are things like Bluetooth or um, um, other radio, um, for example, RFID is, a, is an option. Um, in, in my case, Wi-Fi, I understand. Bluetooth, I'm still learning. Um, I, I, I also wanted to not have a brick at the end of it. I, I wanted to have something that I could potentially use in my, real, in my actual life. And the other big factor for me was cost. So I, I had, a, had a look around my home, and I thought, what could I get that has potential use that I could hook, hook up to the internet? And I thought, how about a toaster? I mean, there's that old gag from way back in the day that um, you, can, you can get NetBSD to run on anything, even a toaster. I mean, it's pretty awesome. But a, I, 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 I did struggle to find a cost-effective Wi-Fi-enabled toaster that I could potentially use in my home. So toaster was out, but then I had a light bulb moment. I thought, let's get a light bulb. So I had a look around. There are lots of different options. Um, the, the bulb I ended up buying was a Xiaomi Yi Light, which, which um, has some pretty awesome features. I mean, it's easy, into easy to install. There are, th there are quite literally two steps. You screw in the light bulb, and you hold a phone in your hand. Um, also, there, there's, a, there's a fun thing here. You can fill your life with lights with an 11-year companion. I mean, I mean who, who doesn't want an 11-year companion? Um, and fun colors as well. I mean, there, there, were, there were lots of different options. Um, this one was an RGB light. Um, lots of others were just the, the, the standard white on off. So I bought one. And in the box, you get a bulb and some instructions. So I've got one here. I'm going to open it up. So the instructions, here you go. Here's a bulb. An Internet of Things thing. But the instructions 
are not in a language that I understand. I speak French and English, but I don't speak what this is. So m the, as, as far as I can tell, the instructions go, number one, turn the light on, number two, do something, and number three, must be profit. I mean, come on, what else could that say? Um, so I had a look at the QR code, and the QR code goes to home.my.com slash download. I'm like, well, this sounds easy. Let's try it. Oh, now I have an APK. So an APK is an Android app, um, all built into the one file. Nice and easy to use. Um, don't even need to, to go through the app store. Um, and it's, it's really easy to get. I thought that finding the APK would be really difficult. But it turns out, nope, just go to the QR code and the instructions, and here's an APK. It mean, I mean, I, I, did find the, um, I did find the app in the App Store, which was a benefit, but it wasn't something that I needed to go out and find. Um, there, there are ways to get APKs from um, App Stores, but this way made it a whole lot easier for me to just open up the APK and have a look around. So my first step was to plug the light in, and when it comes up, you get, a, it, it is a Wi-Fi access point initially. And it had this name, Ye Link Light Color One My App, and then some numbers. So the numbers, you may note, are that, so the last four characters of the SSID are actually the last four characters of the bulb's MAC address, which makes it easy to find it in the future and also to differentiate between the bulbs, because I bought multiple. So I connected to the bulb, Wi-Fi, I DHCP'd, it gave me an address, and I thought, well, let's have a look around. Let's see what this bulb is doing. So I mapped it, and there was nothing. There was no web interface, there was no um, dodgy telnet, there was no SSH port listening. It was just not doing anything. So that was a little bit disappointing. So I then I went and I got the, I, I downloaded the APK and I put it on a throwaway phone that I hadn't attached to any app store. But I, I looked it up on the app store and the permissions that it was asking for were really, really broad. So um, it's a little bit hard to read these pictures. It's big, but it's not enough pixels. Sorry, guys. Um, but the, the things that it wanted to know, it wanted to know where you are. It wanted to be able to read and send SMSs and make phone calls and look at files and photos and use your camera. The, the camera made sense because one of the features of the app is that you can um, point your phone at a thing and the bulb will turn that color, which is a fun feature, I guess, but not something that I'm going to use. It also wants to use my microphone. Um, I, I, d I don't know why it would need my microphone or phone or SMS. Um, the, the, other the, 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 the particularly scary things were in the, the miscellaneous section. Um, it can download files without notification, interact across users, full license to interact across users, transmit infrared, modify secure system settings. Hmm, this doesn't sound good. So I put it on. I put it on a device that I didn't care about throwing away, and I set up a lab. So I I, I, I fired up, fired up the app and got it to control the bulb. Um, this is this is all. Um, without um, without sniffing, um, this is all just using using the bulb as a regular home user would be intended to use the the bulb. So uh, af after I figured out that yes, these bulbs actually work in New Zealand, phew, I, I I I set about getting a lab. So I had my Android device, I had the bulb, they're both Wi-Fi enabled, and then instead of connecting them to my guest Wi-Fi in my house. I, c I set up a, an access point on my Raspberry Pi, except the Wi-Fi card in my Raspberry Pi isn't able to do an access point. So that was very frustrating for me. So I, I went to my cupboard of things, and I got out a really old router, router if you prefer, and I set, that I set this up so then it could do the Wi-Fi, then the Raspberry Pi, I can capture all the, all the traffic. So this is what it looked like. Um, but if you want to make it actually legible, you've got to put symbols on things. But there's just too much noise. So I had a, <laughs> because of the layout of my house, I had my Raspberry Pi Wi-Fiing to my home internet. 
etherneting to my new router, or old router, I guess, that then it did Wi-Fi to the IoT and my Android. This was great. That, that, let, that meant that I could capture all the traffic going from these things out to the internet and back and find out what it's actually doing. So I, fi I fired up Wireshark and I had a look, and yep, sure enough, it's going to China. Um, so when, when, when the bulb, w once, once you've associated the bulb to an access point, it phones home and this is the first thing it does. It, it connects to, it looks up some DNS and then it starts doing UDP something from 54321, great port number, to 8053. But unfortunately the traffic is encrypted. So I've got a, I've got a um, code snippet later of showing you how that's, that's done. But the takeaway from this was the traffic is encrypted, I can't just read it off the wire. This was depressing. Um, so the, the phone, 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 uh, sorry, the, the bulb phones home to China, this address, about every 15 or 20 seconds, um, depending on what it's been doing recently. The, the other thing that I tried was I set up multiple accounts and I associated the bulb with more than one account, but the bulb this is at the um, at the Xiaomi end. They 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 disassociate the bulb from the old account when you associate it to the new. So that was a little bit a little bit sad, but it, it was a good a good finding on on their on their account. So all, all up, I don't really have anything so far. This is, this is a bit depressing, but I also noticed that I wasn't actually capturing all the traffic. I was only getting the traffic that was on the internet side because I was on the Raspberry Pi doing packet capture there. But there was all this potential of the, the phone to talk to the bulb direct without going to the internet. I, I had verified by putting the, the phone on a separate Wi-Fi connection that it does go over the internet and can control it that way, which is how the, um, how the in online services would be phoning home to the, the device. Um, they, they, they call to the, um, to the same address as the, the phone is doing, and then they, they can the, the bulb then, when it phones home, gets a response saying, yep, you should be blue, or whatever it's told. So I set up my desktop computer in the middle instead of the Raspberry Pi. But again, I had trouble with the Wi-Fi card. So even though the Wi-Fi card was capable of doing all the things that it should be doing, it, I just wasn't having any luck. The, the bulb was fine talking to it, but the phone, maybe my phone's just too old. I mean, it, it was a throwaway phone, so ma maybe that was it. So eventually I asked for some help from a colleague and he lent me a Wi-Fi adapter which was a bit larger than mine with a long aerial. And I plugged this into my desktop and that worked. So I was very happy. So now I can see all the traffic that's going through except the local traffic is encrypted too. So at this point I thought, hang on, why am I doing all this research into this bulb on my own. Surely other people have looked at these sorts of things. So I had a look around the internet, and I found that, yes, there were some other people who had done research into these, and they were quite willing to destroy their bulbs, and also they know a thing or two about hardware and electronics, which I'm still learning. I'm not cool enough to do this sort of stuff. But they'd done it. So I got in touch with these folk, big thanks to Yuri and Isla, to, to to find out what they got and to see if I could participate in that in any way. So this is what the inside of the bulb looks like. One of their findings was that they, they took apart a white-only bulb, but the, board, the control board um, was ha had pins labeled RBG, no idea why they're out of order, but um, they, they, they had R RGB outputs showing that this, con this board would probably be a, the same controller for the, the color bulbs as well. So I got in touch with them and said, hey, can I have a copy of the firmware that you got? Because I'm not going to have much luck pulling it out of this without, um, without doing the same sorts of things that they did, except I don't know how. So super big thanks to those guys for letting me be a part of that. They hit me back pretty quickly, actually, and said, yep, here's, here's a copy of the firmware. Here's the research that we've done. Um, and so I've, I've been able to leverage on that. So I had a quick look at the firmware. And you start with the basics. I ran strings, and in the firmware, the only thing of, r of, of interest really was that there was a, an X509 certificate for cloud.ulight.com. Now, I'd not seen this DNS name in my sniffing in any way. 
and so I, I, I wasn't quite sure where this was going, but probably they're doing cert pinning or something like that. I ran bin walk, and bin walk found the same certificate, but nothing of interest really beyond that. So I, I thought, okay, well mayb maybe this is um, cert pinning. Let's let's see what cert is on that domain at the moment. Nope, it's a totally different cert. So the the cert for the cert that's in the firmware is a self-signed certificate. The cert that's being served on the internet is a cert from Rack versus L. Um, so nope, cert pinning is not a thing. So I then carried on and looked into some of the um, the scripts that are available both on the internet and also um, shared with me privately, and I found that the bulb is completely controllable. Wh one, of th one of the good things about this particular bulb, um, which, I which I found out before purchasing, was that the vendor publishes a um, interoperability PDF. I'll show it to you later if you like. It, um, it, it has all the necessary information in it to, um, to communicate with the bulb, um, but not using the their proprietary cloud systems. So I, I had a look, and the the code that uh, the code that I had access to said that yep in in the header of this, um, so you, you you can send a particular um, packet to the device saying just it's just a hello packet, uh, but the response has a token in it. Now this token is um, reset when 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 you when you pa first power on the bulb. The the token is reset, and it is it seems to be a random string. I, I'm I'm yet to to find the the algorithm within the the firmware that that produces these. Um, so ba ba basically, you you say hello bulb, and the bulb comes back saying hi. Here's my key. This is very useful. It means that I can then communicate with the bulb. So when the bulb is unassociated to a network, when it fires up its own access point and you connect to it. You can communicate to it through through this UDP channel and say, "Hey, what's your?" Just say hello. It gives you the key, and then you can tell it to do stuff. So I've got a demo coming up, um, which hopefully will work. Um, but the the gist of it is, when you do a factory reset of the device, it also resets its token. So all these tokens came from actually this bulb. Yes, this bulb. Um, all within a space of a few minutes. So this, this to me, looks like it's not going to be predictable super awesomely. Um, I don't know, may maybe maybe you lot can say that's totally a, a, a SHA-256 counter or something, I'm not sure. Um, but so factory resetting the bulb also resets the token. If I have the token, I can control the bulb if it's either talking to it directly or after it's associated to a network. I c if I have the token, then I can also communicate with it um, with that token, I couldn't find any. I there there was no way that I could see that the token was being transmitted across the wire. Um, I did check that um, in all, all my PCAPs, um, but that that wasn't showing up for me. So I'm gonna do a bit of things that won't be on the screen. Um, hopefully this demo works. Um, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset this bulb. Way still blowing. Okay. Let's see if I can compute it. Right. So, is my Wi Fi on? Cool. So I want to. Let's do it. This will be fun. If I can type, I can't type. Why can't I type? Way. All right. Let's see what Wi Fi's are around. Wow. Okay. Let's see what Wi Fi access points are around. Wow. <laughs> All right. Let's see what Wi-Fi access points around that I, that I can look at. Of course I can't type. All right, let's go to the top again. Is 
is it working? Is it working? Yay, there it is. Okay. So let's see if I can type again. Why is tab not working? Oh, no, I want that one. Oh, no, I can't middle click. This is going to be annoying. All right, I'll type it. This is your opportunity to really mess with my demo. Um, please don't. Okay, cool. So I'm now I'm connected, and I'm going to get an address. Cool. So I have an address. I'm connected to the bulb. So now hopefully my demo works. All right. Let's go. Let's go new. Okay, so I wrote a quick web app in Python. Let's go for Python. What am I doing for time? Okay, I'm good. <laughs> so here you can see, oh yeah, that's fine. So in here I've got the, so th this this web app is a very simple, I'll tell you what, let's pull it up. So this is a very simple bottle Python um, thing. So basically what it's doing is it's sending a hello packet and then getting the reply and pulling the token out of it. Um, so the things that I've written. So I've got a couple of buttons here. So hopefully when I click this, the light should go green. Hey! So <laughs> this particular um, demonstration is the is the most basic. So the um, the interoperability guide, which I can pull up. I don't think I've got a PDF viewer. Um, does Chrome, does um, Firefox do PDFs? No, that's Chrome. Okay. Oh, it does. Okay, let's try it. Here we go. Live demos, right? Do I have to do some magic? I'm being told no. I just view, uh, view the file. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's go over here. Window. See if that works. Way magic, cool, good work. Thanks for the tip, guys. So if I make this big, then this um, interoperability guide shows you how stuff works. It's pretty detailed, um, but it it has the um, it yeah it, it's it's got details in it in terms of what how to communicate with the device. So you can do lots of different things. So one one of the one of the um, fun features of this particular bulb is that you can tell it turn off in X minutes. Um, so that's here. You've got um, cron, cron get, cron delete. Um, so the 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 fun 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 thing with that would be, if you could control if you could control one of these, then you can tell it, hey, turn off in six minutes, and then leave. For some reason, the light just turns off randomly. Um, so I am going to go back to here. And Okay, so the other the other things that the the bulb can do, uh, um, you can adjust the brightness. So hopefully this works. I think so. It's at 100 percent now. So if I dim it down, it should go to one percent, which is a bit fairly low. Um, ba basically, it's got a um, one through 100 um, brightness um, scale. Um, an another feature of this particular bulb is that you can change its color just for fun. Looks like this is working. Yay. Good news. Um, but you can also toggle it with the, the kind of your, your basic use case. Um, 
So I'm going to be pushing all these changes back up through the um, ex ex existing channel research channels. Um, I, I intend to get these into the, the repos that are available publicly um, to be able to control these things. But basically, if I go back to my slides, which are here, yes. Um, so my, my, my takeaways from what I've found so far are that the bold phones home on UDP, so there's nothing interesting happening on TCP. I can't fuzz the box. I can't do anything fun on the box. I, I, I did try sending random UDP packets um, by virtue of bad copy pasting, um, and it just doesn't reply if you send it dodgy things. Um, all, all, the, all the traffic is encrypted um, locally and to the internet. Um, the device gets removed from one account when, when it's associated with another, so um, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't have time to, to do that demo. Um, the tokens are rolled when, um, when the, the, the bulb is reset, so I can show you that um, if, I, if I run out. If we, if we don't have questions, I can show you that. Um, yeah, it also, the particular light fitting that this uses is an um, E27, which is surprisingly hard to find. I mean, I, I eventually found a desk lamp that, that worked. But I did, I did give some promises in my, in my blurb. How much data do these bulbs leak? Can one user control another device? Universal plug and play, and what happens when the internet goes away? So how much data, data do they leak? I can't see a lot going back and forth that's not encrypted. Can one user control another's devices? Well, yes, they can if they have the token. But generally speaking, no, these bulbs are pretty good. Also, if you fear that your token has been compromised, reset the device. It's really easy to do. Um, the universal plug and play, nope, it doesn't matter. It phones home to the internet about every 20 seconds or so. So it's not really a factor for this. What happens when the internet goes away? You can still control the device locally because the traffic only goes from your, d your local device. Um, preferably it's the, um, the official app, but totally you can do it through uh, a dodgy laptop running on a USB stick. Um, but online services like IFT and, and such are not going to work if the internet's not there because the internet's not there. So I think that's all of my content. Yes, that's all my content. So I, I, I have a little bit of time for some questions if you want to ask things. I can see a couple of hands, so let's, let's go questions. Um, yeah. So I'm going to point to people. I'm going to point to you first. So the question was, is the do, do I think that the excessive rights for the app is malicious or just lazy? I think it's probably lazy. Um, there is a potential that it could be malicious. Um, I do have the APK. I mean, it's, it's also available freely on the internet. Just hit that URL, you'll get it. Um, Home.me.com slash download. Um, and yeah. It Yes, the, the the bulb is um, yeah the, the the app. I'm I'm fairly sure that it's probably just lazy. Um, I, I I did I did scour the APK. I did scour the firmware. There wasn't really anything of particular interest in there. Um, yep. Yes, that 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 would be my my feel as well. That the um, also the the app is. Um, also enabled to control more than just this bulb. Um, the app can also control other products by the same vendor. Um, there, there's definitely big swathes of code in there to, in terms of controlling temperature of things. So maybe that could be my, my next purchase. Cool. Um, I see another hand down here. I'm going to, yep. What? Uh, the interop guide. Um, should be. Um, I didn't know, um, but that's a really good thing to try. Um, basically, when when I sent it bogus, um, or when I sent it things that it wasn't expecting from the. Um, in terms of if I sent it a packet that was bad in some way, it just didn't reply, um, and then carried on as normal thereafter. So it was effectively just ignoring, um, ignoring those. That's my understanding. Yes, cool. I've I've been signalled that I'm out of time, so I'm going to say thanks. Um,